If you're not familiar with the Vesera series, chances are that it's because they were exclusive to Japanese arcades, never seeing a release on consoles or overseas. This makes them relatively obscure to the general public. Luckily, the games have finally received a much-needed console port by Brazilian studio Cubite Interactive, affording the series some much-needed extra visibility. It's available digitally on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, Xbox One, as well as on PC via Steam. If this is your first time hearing about these games, you might be wondering if they're for you. Otherwise, you might be curious to know if the ports were handled correctly and what extra features and options they might offer. Hopefully, this episode will answer those questions. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Switch, PS4 and Vita versions of Vasara Collection. So, what exactly makes these games so special? Take a look at the original Vasara, for example. You have two attack buttons, one to fire bullets and one to throw bombs. But if you hold the fire button, you'll notice that your character starts charging an attack with their weapon instead of shooting. When fully charged, releasing it not only deals out a powerful close range melee attack, it also gets rid of any bullet that it connects with. You can do this anytime to get rid of any projectile coming your way, only having to wait for the wind up to end. And you can safely collide against enemies as well, allowing you to get very close to them. There's also a meter on top of the screen that fills up by picking up red crystals dropped by enemies. When it's full, your next charge attack becomes an overpowered, screen-clearing boss slaying assault. This might not always happen when you most need it, so you always have to keep an eye out for that gauge to make sure that you put it to good use. Right about now, you might be saying, so, you can run into enemies and get rid of their shots? <laughs> sounds easy. Surprisingly, no this game can still be ridiculously hard at times. Even though you can get rid of bullets, it's easy to misuse charge attacks and it's very easy as well to run into stray bullets that you might not be paying attention to. Bombs and one-ups are fairly uncommon as well. To see the true final boss and ending, you also need to clear the game without looting a single credit. And that's easier said than done. Finally, you can only feed credits to the game up until the last level, during which a game over forces you to restart the entire stage. Meaning that, unlike most coin-hungry arcade games, you can't really just cheese with credits and fail yourself to victory. There's three playable characters, each with their own speed, strength, long-range and close-range weapons. They all play fairly different from one another, so there might be one that fits your own personal playstyle more than the others. They're special enemies that drop blood splattered flags with their names on them if you manage to shoot them down before they flee. Collecting these flags yield bigger score bonuses and it's really satisfying to see them stack up at the end of stages. Vasara 2 changes things up a bit with brand new characters, 5 in total, with one of them being an unlockable. Bombs are now completely gone, giving you 3 Vasara meters instead of 1, that you can use at will, without needing to charge it beforehand. On the one hand, this forces players to play more aggressively from the start, as there's no point to hoard meters early on, since the maximum will always be 3. On the other hand, because there is a maximum of 3, it actually gives players less chances to safely get out of crazy bullet patterns, which instantly makes the game way more difficult. The patterns themselves are far less forgiving than those in the first game, and stages are now mostly made up of boss battles. The game also introduces a new purple bullet, which cannot be destroyed. To see the true final boss and ending, you must also clear the game on a second loop. Everything adds up to a far more challenging game which honestly makes it more intimidating and less approachable than the original. Both games use pre-rendered graphics, which actually look really good, with lots of small details, such as little soldiers fighting on the ground and birds flying into the distance. The soundtrack is also mostly very fun and catchy. It uses traditional Japanese sounding instruments mixed with modern upbeat synths and percussions.
There's some spoken Japanese dialogue between the player and the bosses, and you can play the game with English subtitles, so it's easy to follow what's going on. There is actually a brand new game made for this collection, called Vesara Timeless, in which you have to survive for as long as possible on a single credit. This one might be the most interesting game for modern gamers, as it replaces the pre-render graphics for full 3D polygons, it ditches the vertical aspect ratio for full widescreen support, it has 4-player co-op play, online leaderboards, and randomly generated levels. Even the boss order is randomized at the end of stages. Interestingly, this mode allows you to play as any of the 8 characters from both Basara games, each following the rules of their respective game. Now this mode was for sure designed with 4 players in mind, as the widescreen aspect ratio doesn't make too much sense when playing solo. Enemies are a little bit too spread out, and it's difficult to cover the entire screen. To make up for this, a new dash move was added, and there are now a lot more bomb pickups. Because of its random nature, enemy formations are also not quite as interesting as they used to be either. That said, you do eventually get used to both the look and feel of it, and seeing how far you can get and how high you can score can actually get pretty addictive. The new music arrangements for this mode are also really good. For newcomers, the first two levels of Timeless Mode before the difficulty really ramps up are actually a pretty good place to start and get familiar with the series mechanics. Note though that this mode is sadly completely left out of the Vita version. There's also a gallery mode where you can browse through various artworks including brand new art made specifically for this collection. However, just like Timeless Mode, this gallery is also missing from the Vita version. Concerning the ports, both classic games are included on every version of this collection. By default, the game comes with a wallpaper artwork to fill up the screen on the sides, and a filter that blurs out the pixels. In the Switch and PS4 versions of the game, you can turn off both the borders and the filters, but you can't do this on the Vita version. The game actually still looks really good on the Vita screen, but this might be off-putting for people who prefer to see sharp pixels in their games. There is a slight scaling problem when playing in horizontal mode on both the Switch and PS4 versions, which affects the scrolling graphics, but this can be solved by playing in filter mode or by playing in vertical mode. Thankfully, every version of this collection allows playing in vertical mode. On the PS4 and Switch, if you have the means to rotate your monitor display, this is the ideal way to play on a big screen. For portable options, you'll want to invest on the flip grip accessory if you want to play this way on the Switch. If you like shooters, you'll absolutely want to invest on one anyways. The Vita doesn't require any extra accessories, and you can simply play by holding it sideways. It's surprisingly easy to play this way given the light weight of the device and the quality of the thumbstick, although it does get uncomfortable to hold your Vita like this over long periods of time. The new Timeless mode does look better on the PS4, showcasing better texture detail and lighting effects. The graphics look rather bland on the Switch without these touches, although the game appears to run the same everywhere without any major noticeable issues. Sound-wise, while the sound quality itself seems to be good, the volume levels on both the PS4 and Switch are a bit of an issue, as the title, menu and first two games all have completely different volumes, with the title and menus being very loud, the original game being barely audible and Vasara 2 being somewhere in the middle. This is mostly an issue when playing with headphones, especially when using the flip grip accessory on the Switch, as it actually blocks access to the volume controls of the system. Hopefully, there will be a patch fixing this. On the flip side, this is actually a non-issue on the Vita version, as everything appears to be leveled evenly. The classic games offer a couple of extra options which affect gameplay, such as the amount of bombs and lives that you start with and the game difficulty. Though, to be honest, the difficulty changes aren't significant enough in easy mode to make it enticing or even noticeable. Speaking of options, the Switch version requires reapplying individual game options whenever you start a game. So, if you want to remove the filters, remove the wallpaper, or change the difficulty settings, you'll have to reapply them all the time. This should hopefully also be fixed in a future update, as the PS4 version does not have this issue. 
Both the Vita and PS4 versions have trophies, so if that's important to you, then these versions allow you to track and share your achievements. Finally, the Switch and PS4 versions have online leaderboard support, while the Vita version only has local ranking. Leaderboards on the classic games are a little nonsensical because they don't really take continuing into account. That said, the leaderboards are a good motivation to keep getting better in the new timeless mode. The games go for about $10 digitally, with a pre-order price of $5 on the Nintendo eShop. Either way, this collection is an amazing value for those prices. There's also an extremely limited physical release by strictly limited games, but the pre-orders have long since been sold out. If you're a fan of shooters, or curious to try one, then Vasara Collection is an easy recommendation. Hopefully, we'll keep seeing more obscure arcade-only titles make the jump to consoles. Well, until next time.